back with Andrea Mitchell reports. And joining me, Maryland Congressman Elijah Cummings, the top Democrat on the House Oversight Committee. And, and Congressman, we have a lot to get to, but I want to begin by offering my condolences on the death of your nephew, Christopher, a, a bright young student at Old Dominion University who was tragically shot and killed in a random shooting last week. How are you doing, Congressman? Oh, I'm doing pretty good. I'm uh, right now. Uh, preparing a eulogy for a 20-year-old honor student, and it's uh, it's kind of tough because you think about the potential of these young people, and they do the right things, and then to be gunned down, uh, it's just very, very sad. But thank you very much. Heartbreaking, really. And and so I want to ask you, if I can, about this hearing into an ATF operation, which is known as Fast and Furious. It called for ATF agents to track weapons, but not stop them from being bought or trafficked. And according to one agent who testified, more than 2,000 weapons were tracked, but then about three quarters of them actually disappeared. I, it, it sort of raises the point, what was the point of allowing guns to be trafficked into Mexico where they couldn't be tracked anymore? Well, what, what do you think of this whole operation? It gives, it gives me great concern. Um, and I, I mean, as I listened to the testimony during the hearing, uh, I'm convinced that we've got to look even deeper into this matter because there are some missing links. You're absolutely right. And it's not just that they are ending up on the Mexican side of the border. Uh, ATF officer uh, Fraselli told us during the hearing that a lot of these weapons are ending up north of the border and ending up in cities like uh, Baltimore and Detroit and Norfolk and New York and are being used to uh, bring harm to other people. So we, and, and some of the testimony that came out was clear, and this, this is from ATF officers, they were telling us that part of the problem has been that we have very weak gun laws. And so we've got to do a thorough examination of this, and we're going to follow the evidence wherever it takes us. Well, as and you know, Republicans like Daryl Issa and Chuck Grassley accused the Justice Department and the ATF of stonewalling efforts to figure out exactly who authorized this program. Do you think the administration is stonewalling? I'm not sure, but what I did say during the hearing is that it's very important, and I said this to the administration, that we get to the bottom of this. And I ask them to cooperate uh, to the nth degree, but you gotta understand, part of the problem is the administration, and that, that is the Justice Department, has said, look, we want you, com the committee, to work with us because we're very worried about uh, jeopardizing criminal cases. Uh, we're worried about uh, people being harmed, uh, worried about you talking to witnesses that we have to use in trials. Uh, and so, and I'm talking about serious trials, I'm talking about murder trials, so there has to be a balance. In other words, the committee has to do its work, that is to look at this matter and try to figure out uh, who is responsible for th these decisions. And at the same time, the Justice Department has indicted a lot of people and they are trying to take these to trial and they don't want us to interfere. And I think we can do both. I think we, we can let the Justice Department do their job and the committee do, do its job, and, and I'm hoping that we will strike that balance. That's what I've said to the Justice Department. That's what I've said to the, the committee. You know, I, I was just handed this, and, and I don't imagine you've had a chance to hear it, but um, actually at the White House press briefing, they asked about this Fast and Furious program, uh, and, and he said, and Carney said, uh, that he has asked the Inspector General to investigate the matter, um, and it, it make sure that everyone is cooperating with the Oversight Committee. What question in particular would you like to see answered in all of this? I want to know why it is that these guns were being tracked up to a certain point and then the tracking just stopped. We're still trying to figure out why that happened. We have some ideas. I want to know that and I want to know why uh, the prosecutors in some of these cases, particularly in Phoenix, uh, refuse to uh, take some of these cases to trial. There are a number of issues that we need to get to, and I, and I just want, wanted to be clear that we want, to, we want a fair hearing, we want one that's filled with integrity, we also want one uh, where, that is thorough, and that's what uh, we're looking for, and I think that's what we're, we're going to get. I think we can do this in a bipartisan way, because after all, uh, the lives of many people on the Mexican, Mexican side of the border and our side of the border 
uh, might be in jeopardy here. And let me ask you finally, Congressman, because so much attention over the last several weeks in Washington has been focused on uh, Congressman Weiner. Now that he has resigned, do you expect that to uh, end all of this, or do you think that some of these questions can linger even after he's gone? I think that um, this is, I think it's over. Uh, I'm sure some people in the press may feel differently about that. But let me tell you, when you've got, I've got people in my district that are losing their houses. We've got people who have jobs. Uh, we've got folks who are losing their health care, trying to figure out how to be treated. Um, we, and, and we've got the debt ceiling vote coming up uh, fairly shortly. We've got, uh, we cannot afford any distractions uh, for uh, Anthony, who's a, a, a friend. Uh, I think he made a decision that he thought was appropriate for he and his family and, and for the, the Congress. And keep in mind, I, I've been listening to your station all day, and they've been wondering whether he's going to do something else from here. He's 46 years old. So he, I'm sure there will be many things that he'll be able to do. But the fact is that we must go on because we've got 300 million people to represent. Well, Congressman uh, Elijah Cummings, again, at a very difficult time when you and your family are facing a tragedy. It's, it's kind of you to take the time and, again, our, our sympathies on, on the loss of your nephew. Thank you very much.